uh, Jane, welcome to Nightbreak. Thanks for joining us, man. How you doing? Hey, thanks for the support. Oh, that's great, man. Um, so hopefully I'm saying this right. Malefic Throne, is that how I pronounce Malefic? Yeah, Mal Malefic Throne. Yeah, beautiful. So um, I read that uh, yourself, Stephen John, you guys have known each other a long time, right, before this whole thing kicked off? Well, yeah, John and I had been together um, since uh, music with, with the uh, Angel Corpse band back yeah. in 1995, 96, when we started. Um, he was on the original demo tape uh, that came out in 1996, and then the Hammer of Gods album, and then also the Exterminate album that came out in 1998, hmm. um, after which time uh, he exited the band and then uh, went on to uh, many things over the years since. I mean, I, I think the most immediate thing he did after he was out of the band, uh, out of Angel Corpse, was uh, the, the Origin band. Hmm. I think I, I think early on, early on when they started, and, and some other things that he'd been involved in too, and a whole hell of a lot of stuff ever since, though. Yeah. So, um, other than uh, playing together, how did you all sort of meet? You know. Well, at the time um, when we were first starting what was to become Angel Corps. Um, Originally, when I moved to Kansas City, Missouri, where the uh, the bass player vocalist of Angel Corpse, uh, Pete, was living with the drummer from Order from Chaos uh, in a house together in Kansas City, um, their band had broken up, and I'd been in touch with uh, with Pete, and then I'd, I'd moved down to Kansas City from my home state of uh, Minnesota, oh. and at first, uh, Mike, the, the the drummer from Order from Chaos, we were we were developing the material and we hadn't decided on a band name or anything yet. And on the by and by, over several months' time, um, he de Mike decided that he didn't want to participate in what we were trying to do, which was fair enough. And so Pete and I, with the music that we were doing we didn't have any anyone to play drums at that point and where we were living in kansas city uh kansas city missouri here in the u.s uh at that time in the mid 90s it was not any kind of a metal capital so there wasn't any really any people around except a very few and we happened to be at some fucking new year's eve party or something once in like 95 probably and uh, a, a guy from another band from the area called Possession, which I think are long, long since gone. Some some localized band from that that part of the country uh, mentioned to us that there was a drummer that 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 was into playing like more of the the the, the death metal style of drumming with blast beats, double you know fast double bass and all of that, and uh, was was playing with a local band that I think were called uh, Malicious Intent. And um, somehow I, I must have got a phone number from the guy, the, the guy at this New Year's Eve party. And so I called him up and that was John. And we told him that we were looking to make a demo tape. And, you know, at first it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll just come in and do the tape. And, you know, you know, whatever, kind of like almost like he was going to just do it as like a session thing. And, you know, and, you know, maybe see where it went from there. And uh, we were fortunate enough. Uh, fortunate enough after we did the demo um, that within, you know, about a month or so is time after making the demo that we picked up the interest from uh, Osmos Productions out of France to do the uh, to do the de uh, do a contract uh, for the debut album, uh, which became Hammer of Gods that it came out about a year, year after that in 97. So, you know, so things picked up uh, pretty early on for that, but that that's how that's how we came upon John uh, during that time in Kansas City. Yeah, cool. And then if we jump forward, uh, January twenty twenty two, the Malefic Throne uh, EP comes out. So, um, how did all that start up? January twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh now we're in twenty three. Yeah, but um, well. Um, after everything started shutting off during the COVID uh, pandemic and hysteria that came with it, um, 
everybody was grounded. You know, no tours were happening. I mean, pretty much everybody was stuck at home. All of us were. None of our none of our active fans were able to to do anything at that time. Um, you know, Morbid Angel wasn't touring. John's band's origin or even Eight Eternal weren't going to be able to tour. Lucky, lucky enough for the Perdition Temple band that I've got, we were able to do a U.S. and Canada tour with Cannibal Corpse for about five, six weeks at the end of 2019. So luckily we squeezed that in. Otherwise, you know, we'd have had nothing since probably about 2018. But uh, anyways, so everybody's locked down and somehow we were chatting online once, like somebody put up a post about, you know, some kind of a funny topic like hornets or some so, something that was going on in the news at the time about some kind of a hornet and a couple of us jumped in and were making cracks about it and uh somebody you know somebody said oh yeah yeah maybe make a band called this or something and i think it was john who made like some comedy like oh yeah fuck it i'll play the drums and i was just kind of like you know why not just join in on this? And I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, we'll round it out as a three piece and I'll do the guitars. You know, so we all had a laugh, ha ha ha, you know, no big deal. But, you know, something about it stuck with me in the back of my head that I'm thinking, you know, if the three of us, me, John and Steve actually fucking did something, it could probably be some intense, intense stuff. You know, especially, you know, we, we've all been at this, creeping on 30 years time now each of us individually in one form or another you know i'm like i'm like i'm we definitely all could bring it mm. and uh you know make make something special out of it. so about a week after this you know laugh that we had about it i messaged john and i'm like well hey you know if we did something seriously you know would you want to do it and um he wanted he was into it and then uh, it was just a matter of messaging Steve again and being like, hey, do you want to do it? You know, I mean, it might not have been as easy to coordinate doing this and putting it together if not for the pandemic. So I can actually thank the pandemic for for enabling and, you know, strange ways that the devil gives his blessings. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, I don't mind. But uh, yeah, so we got together um, through messages and stuff, and I started working on material because I was, I mean, I, of course, with my day job, uh, we weren't working in an office anymore, so I was working at home remotely. I'm actually sitting in my work desk right now that I'd be doing do that I'd be doing during the day otherwise, and you know, so I. You know, be between the activities that I'll be doing for my regular real world job, um, you know, I was able to work on a lot of new material and write, write a lot of songs. So I was able to write music for some of my other band projects and, and whatnot, and still, you know, be able to create material for Malefic Throne as well. So through email exchanges, sending each other audio files, uh, all of us doing our parts remotely from from home because none of us live in the same city um i'm in florida john's up in new york steve's in um I, I, west virginia so we're all thousands of miles apart um so we had to do it all through file sharing to do it but john records his drums and i'd record to that and then steve would put together the lyrics and his bass parts and record it at home there and we put it together that way and then we had um, a mutual friend, Art Pays, um, who had some uh, mixing and mastering gear of better quality than anything that uh, that we had. So we, he was able to do the uh, the mix and mastering for us for what became that uh, that mini album that came out on uh, Hell's Headbangers uh, January last year. Mm. Fuck, it's been a year already. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, um, the production is particularly good, actually. It's got a real old school kind of sound, like the drums and everything. Um, did you give much instruction for that or did you just kind of let him do what he wanted with it? Well, I mean, just by the nature of the characters of who we are, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely going to lean towards something that's probably going to have a little bit, you know, compared to modern approaches, mm -hmm. that's 
probably going to be a bit more archaic. Like even the guitar recordings that that for my guitar parts for this, um, you know, I'm I'm using I'm using equipment that was obsolete 20 years ago. And, you know, hopefully I'm looking to get a little bit more into the, the, the 21st century with, with gear for future recordings. But, uh, you know, that has a lot to do with it, too. So some of the noises yeah, you get from the instruments and whatnot and just from the overall audio of the entire thing, it, it, it wasn't recorded in like any kind of a state of the art kind of studio environment, you know, and, and, and for this kind of music, there's supposed to be supposed to be a bit of an ugliness to it mm. you know so in a way it it, it probably has a, a better production that, that you might get from something um that pretends to be death metal but records it like it's a pop album yeah yeah, yeah i love it i think hopefully that makes sense no it does i hope your next recording sounds you know similar it's a good sound um so you got the sodom cover on there nuclear winter um was there a bit of like which which one do we want to cover like how'd you pick that one we beat around a bit about it, about which would like which band or which song we were going to do. And, you know, we, we tossed around things like Possessed and Dark Angel and um, somehow something, you know, universally, the three of us all kind of name dropped Sodom. And, you know, I'm, you know, I thought about it for a while. It's like, you know, we, we could do the, the easy choice and just go back to the oldest record and do something off within the sign of evil or obsessed by cruelty. Sure. But I'm like, you know, I, 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 to me, the song Nuclear Winter from Sodom is almost like Germany's thrash metal equivalent of Angel of Death from Slayer oh. you know, here in the United States. So I figured it's like, you know, if, if we're going to, you know, if the three of us are going to do a cover of something, you know, we should we should go large and, you know, and go for something that's that's a real bona fide classic, you know, and, and do it justice, you know, and, and make sure that it was something that we were going to do that we're not half assing it. Um, I that was the only song on the mini album that I did the vocals, right. you know, and. Tom. Tom from Sodom has kind of a loose way that he puts his lyrics over the words. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe at the time back in the eighties, he was still, you know, maybe having some difficulties with putting together like English phrases over the riff. So sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to be able to, to, to do those lines of lyrics, you know, so that was a big, ch I mean, the guitar parts weren't so much of a challenge for me on that cover song. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly simple song to do only a handful of riffs. But uh, what I really wanted to try to nail as best as possible was the vocal performance, you know, and, and, to, and to get it to sound as true to form and accurate, uh, you know, in, in relation to the original song, you know, because I've heard covers of that song done in the past, uh, you know, over, over the years. And there's always something a little bit slippery, you know, with the music or the way the vocals are done in it, you know, so I, I wanted to make a really, really strong version of that. So. Yeah, that 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 that's uh, that's how we deduced it down to doing that song, uh, "Nuclear Winter" from Sodom. Yeah, awesome. Um, and so now yeah, you've recently signed to Agonia Records. How um how'd that come about? I'd been in touch with uh, Philip from Agonia from uh, from some time ago, uh, years back. There was even a, a time probably around 2014 or I think maybe about 2013 or 2014 where, where he'd even expressed interest in the Perdition Temple band, you know, but at that time I'd already renewed, renewed a deal with, uh, with Hell's Headbangers, yeah. which is still ongoing. Um, you know, so, so we'd been in touch about things before and then, um, we we knew the, the the release the mini album for Malefic Throne that we put out through Hell's Headbangers. We kind of look at that, even though it's like a actual you know physical release. We kind of regarded that as a, a demo, yeah. like like sort of a label released demo. 
So uh, we, we weren't bound to uh, Hell's Headbangers for that. And the other guys started talking about it. Be like, okay, well, where are we going to, you know, go next for, for a label? And like, if we, if we want to get the kind of product that we really want the, the, the proper full length album debut to come out from the band, you know, what are we going to need to do that? You know, so when we put together what it would really encompass, uh, or, or take to encompass uh, doing that, uh, we knew we had to talk to some labels that, you know, that might be able to do a bit more than, uh, you know, some of the boundaries that that maybe Hell's, uh, Hell's Headbangers had, had uh, would have regarding that. Uh, which I still have, a, you know, I still have an ongoing great relationship with them, but uh, for what we're looking to do for the Malefic Throne thing, we definitely needed to to get into some some bigger waters for that you know and the resulting album uh, i'm sure it's gonna reflect that yeah cool yeah. and talking labels um you ran evil vengeance records right for a bit there yeah that was that was pretty brief it was right after angel corpse originally broke up in 2000 not too long after that i i had a bit of money and i've I thought that I knew what I was doing, you know, 2020 hindsight, I would have, you know, ran screaming away from this idea, <laughs> but I thought that, Hey, I know, I know some cool bands, you know, and, you know, I, I, I got some money, I can press CDs and, you know, build it and they will come. No, they won't. Uh -huh. um, so I put out a, a few releases. There was a, a Brazilian band called Abhorrence and uh, it was their, their only ever full length album called uh, Evoking the Abomination. And then the next one was another uh, band from Brazil called Ophiolatry. And it was their album called Anti Evangelistic Process, which out of out of the, the releases that I actually put out, that was probably my favorite one. Um, you know, and unfortunately, I wasn't really able to to get the kind of reach doing a label uh, or the promotion, you know, I mean, I thought, okay, print the CDs, put it out, put flyers in the mail, and that was going to do it. I didn't really consider all of the things like, oh, you need to get advertising through the magazines. You need to, you know, you know, have a whole, lit there was, there were so many things that I didn't consider that, um, you know, really, really led to the, the label falling apart within just a few years time. You know, luckily I was able to sell off most of the dead stock of, of product that I had, so I didn't completely lose my ass on it. But, uh, I mean, it, the, the, there was things I learned from doing it, you know, but uh, I definitely wasn't the person at the time that should have really been trying to do that. My, my networking at that point was pretty pitiful, and that's a big part of it, too, to make that work, so... You know, but you live and you learn. I'm still alive at this point. So, I mean, life hasn't killed me just yet. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And I'm um, talking about Perdition Temple. Um, you guys put out Merciless Upheaval last year. Um, what's what's the go with that band at the moment? Um, are you working towards something else? Uh, that's that's on the plate for this year, too. So th this year is actually going to get really, uh, really, really busy um, trying to do some live activity some of which hasn't even announced yet. Uh, some good stuff, uh, some good live stuff coming up. And so we're looking to probably by around the summer, I'll begin recording all the parts for the, the guitars and uh, Alex will be doing his bass parts and on the album I'll be doing the vocals. And we're going to try to record that around this summer. While at the same time, we're going to be trying to record this full length for uh, Malefic Throne as well. So somewhere in, in all of this, it's going to get, you know, almost back to back uh, sessions on recording the parts for all these albums. Yeah. It'll be doable. It'll be busy as fuck, but um, it'll come together. And then, uh, but so yeah, that that's what's going on. Cause that, that um, for Perdition Temple, that latest release that came out just this last year, it's sort of an expanded mini album. 
Oh. It's four, it was four original songs and then it was four cover songs. So if you, if you have the vinyl edition, you have the four original songs on the A side and then the B side is cover songs. Mm-hmm. So for people that don't give a shit about the cover songs, they can just stop it and not flip the record, you know, whatever, stop the CD. But anyways, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to have a bit of an interim release since the last album that came out in 2019. And we haven't had any kind of live activity and most everybody else at that point had neither. So I'm like, well, okay, let's try to put out some kind of a record before we, you know, have another year's gap up until the next full length, which here we are. So we're going to go into production on that, uh, that, that new full length. Uh, and hopefully if we can get it recorded and all the, all the parts recorded by sometime into the summer, uh the way release schedules go we could probably have like cd you know cd or cassette and digital editions out likely before the end of the year lps i mean everywhere in the world right now lps are like six months to a year to get those pressed so the chances of the help i mean you know how it goes Anybody, anybody listening to this know, knows all about that. If they've done any kind of pre-orders trying to order LPs in the last year or two, it's it, it's it's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those, yeah. So are those songs all written? They're ready to ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Actually, the drums for the for the newest Beardish Tradition Temple album. Uh, the the other eight songs that'll be going on this next full length. Ronnie had all recorded the drums about at the same time that he'd recorded the, the drum parts for the, the current one, the, the one that's out now, the Merciless Upheaval. Yeah. So it, it's just waiting there for me to put together the, to record the guitar parts and then uh, record the vocals, which hence the staggering between the two is, I'm pretty lousy uh, speed wise coming up with lyrics. So it's only been in the last couple of months that I've actually finally finished up what I'm satisfied with as lyrics for this next album. So now I've got all the components. Now it's just a matter of just rehearsing the shit to myself for a while and then go and start tracking it. And then we'll go get it mixed and finished. And uh, like I said, if we can have that all done by the, by the end of the, into the summer, uh, we could hope to have that out uh, through Hell's Head Bangers um, before the end of the year, maybe. Mm, yeah cool and i'm um, talking about angel corpse um there's there's been you know breaks before little stints of breaks um is there any chance that it'll come back at some point no no okay not yeah. a chance at all no worries yeah no that's cool um and outside of your stuff what have you been listening to what are you what are you checking out at the moment um uh, there's been a there's been a bunch of uh, things like even like in this last year, um, somebody had asked me to do like one of those top 10 favorites of the year or something. And yeah. um, some some friends from some years ago finally put out an album after over a decade, uh, Negative Plane, uh, if, you, if you know them at all. Mm, no, I don't know. Yeah, what, what yeah, kind they, of stuff? They, yeah. Their previous album came out about, about, 2011 i think it was so they just put out a new album called the pack uh, that came out this last year and you know they they haven't they haven't broken pace at all i mean it literally sounds like it's an album that could have came out a few months after their previous one yeah cool yeah you know it's all the same guys that was really good Uh, um hang on a second i actually wrote this down somewhere yeah norris There's a band out of Finland that I that I heard. I heard their uh, recent album, a younger band too, but they really sound like they could have been out of the late 80s or into the early 90s called Morbific. Uh-huh. I thought that was pretty good. And uh, what else we got? Yeah, here we go. Obviously, uh, and I, and I wouldn't even say that my opinion's biased, but uh, the Aries Kingdom uh, new album that came out last year where Alex, the uh, 
bass player, live vocalist for Perdition Temple, his other band. Hmm. Uh, I thought that was great. In Darkness at Last, uh, the new uh, Satan, Earth in Earth Infernal. You know, there's a great example of an old legacy band going back to the 80s hmm. that still maintains the integrity of uh, who's in the band. Because nowadays you have so many brands or it's an old known band band name, but it might be one borderline retired musician that hires a bunch of young, you know, young kids to come out and play. And then they just manage to top the bill of every festival on earth. But nothing really remains of the original band. But you take a band like Satan, it's pretty much still the core lineup that they had back on their very first album back in like. 83 or 84 or whatever the hell that was oh. you know and their new one earth infernal is really great um there's a band out of israel called death siege their new album is really good um a french band misgivings their debut album uh one out of mexico ravenous death uh their album visions of the netherworld i think that's like their third album and that was that was some really good stuff and another another new favorite that i'd uh i regret that i was kind of late to the party discovering was this uh italian band called falsa doom oh. you know now they really capture that uh that late 80s underground tape trading type death metal that you that you that you heard when i was like a you know like when i was in my early teens and uh, they just put out a, a, their debut full length album last year called uh fate worse than death and that that's really good too oh. and uh yeah so that like at least recently like in the last year those were definitely some of the ones that have uh jumped out at me yeah awesome that's cool um and yeah back to malefic throne is that um is this album all all written you just got to put it together music is all written mm -hmm. um it might be a little bit of time with uh steve working on the the lyrics for the stuff because I, I i don't do any of the lyrics for malefic throne but i do that by choice too because i i just want that much more variance between each of the bands wherever i can get it mm. Yeah. You know, where it's like with uh, Perdition Temple, I'll, I'll write all the music and the lyrics, you know, and then me and Ronnie will arrange the parts and whatnot. But uh, with the other bands, I try to like not write any lyrics so that there's just that much more differentiation between the two because they're all they're all death metal, black death metal bands, you know. So it you know you you, you got to do try to do what you can to you know not just recycle things between the two different uh, you know two or more different projects. Hmm. No, sure enough. but um yeah but musically i've got all the songs with cool. i've got uh eight songs prepared uh john right now is in europe uh with origin they're doing a tour with uh monstrosity for about a month or so i believe you know so so he won't be able to do anything for a little while and then i think orbit angel i believe they had a tour announced for march so yeah there's going to be a little bit of give and take with time but uh we'll still pull it together and we should hope to have all the the work done with the the recording process of all the stuff uh probably into the late part of the summer maybe fall at the latest and possibly we maybe can get the you know cd editions of, uh, of that out uh, through agonia maybe before the end of the year too but you know, we're, we're not going to stress over it that hard, though. I mean, we, we want to do it right. Yeah. And are there plans for shows eventually with Malefic Throne? Yeah. Yeah. Once, once we get once we get it all tied down and, you know, once there's a little bit of room to breathe with everybody with all of their other bands, mm. uh, you know, and, and when there's a gap that that we could all three of us be able to uh, get time away from one of the other one of the other bands and do it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in talks with some people to try to make those kind of arrangements, either for the U.S. or Europe or wherever the hell we can get. Mm. Yeah, cool, awesome. Well, look, Jane, thanks for your time. It's been great to talk, and um, yeah, I'm definitely keen to hear hear the record. You know, it's gonna be gonna be good stuff. Cheers, man. All right, thanks a lot, and thanks for the support. And uh, have have a good day, man. Yeah, you too, man. Have a good one. See ya, bye.